Here I'm going to do another demonstration of a self-excited induction generator built from a regular squirrel cage three-phase AC induction motor. This is a quarter horsepower 230 volt three-phase AC motor. I have it mechanically coupled to another identical motor which is being driven by a variable frequency drive so I can vary the speed. So I'm merely using the right hand side motor as a physical driver, mechanical driver, and I'm going to be measuring the output voltage from this motor on the left hand side which will be acting as a generator. And to make this a self-excited induction generator I've connected a three-phase capacitor bank in delta fashion to these stator windings. I've also got a voltmeter connected to measure the AC voltage from this induction generator. And then I've got another device connected too. I've got good old-fashioned Weller soldering gun to put a real AC load on this generator. This uh, soldering gun has a rating of 140 watts on the high side and 100 watts on the low, so if I pull the trigger halfway, I get 100 watts, full 140 watts. So I'm going to show how this works. You can watch the voltage here as I speed the motor up, and then also as I pull the trigger on the soldering gun. I'll speed it up here. At first, all I'm seeing is the voltage produced by the residual magnetic field. It slowly builds up builds up and past a certain critical RPM it shoots up to about 170 volts or so. Currently the frequency on my VFD is 37 Hertz so I'm a little over half speed here. This is an 1800 RPM synchronous motor, uh, synchronous speed anyway, so half speed for this in synchronous terms is 900 RPM so I'm a little over 900 RPM, 170 volts. I take my soldering gun, pull the trigger, and you can see I'm getting light at the end, but it dims pretty, pretty severely. And also you can see my voltmeter now has gone way down. In fact, I've lost excitation. It's down around 2 volts. If I let go of the trigger, it's not really building up much. And I may have to speed it up to get this to build up again. A little bit more voltage there. Speed it up a little bit more. There I go. It shoots right up. I have to slow it down, get to a reasonable voltage level. Pull the trigger again. 70 volts. I go half power. 50 volts. That's very interesting. The more I load this down, the more voltage I get out of it. It's a very interesting characteristic here for a generator. But it's still not a whole uh, 120 volts as it used to be run on. So I'm going to hold the trigger down with one hand. I'm going to speed the motor up with my other hand and try to get this up to 120 volts AC, which is standard wall socket voltage. There we go, 120 volts. That's full power, 140 watts. I can feel the heat coming off the soldering gun. If I go with half power here, actually goes down to 102 volts. I take my finger off the trigger, it shoots way up to 230. So as you can see, voltage regulation on this uh, self-excited induction generator is very odd. It has some very interesting characteristics. I'd also be very interested to measure the torque that's required to spin this induction generator, but I don't really have any way of doing that easily. I can monitor the current to the VFD, but that's a very, very rough uh, estimate of, of motor torque. Anyway, just wanted to demonstrate it is actually possible to get real power out of this thing, powering a, a significant load with this very uh, cheesy setup of three 20 microfarad capacitors and delta formation hooked up to the stator winding of this motor. So that's an induction, self-excited induction generator.